Susan Hunter is a local poet and former newspaper editor whose poems have been published in several journals. Currently a freelance journalist, Susan was the winner of the recent Plymouth Poetry Contest, organized by Plymouth Poet Laureate Stephen Delbos. This is her original work. Hello, I'm Susan Hunter. I hope you enjoy these poems. End of story during a pandemic. The endings are not on the page. They tell of the last conversation, kindnesses, gin and tonics in a cabin, Casablanca on a rainy Cambridge night. I've searched for my great grandfather who may have died on a ship or may have married someone else. May have been a cleric with a choke collar cradling his handsome face. May have loved my great grandmother and taken all her money. Small waves lapped around their ankles as they ran across a sea of mussel shells. Sunlight sparkled on the water before reaching its resting place on the opposite shore. How's that for an ending? How else do you say it ended if not with a broken heart? Son, how many times will you rise before this is over? You top the neighbor's house as she walks her dogs gingerly in frosty grass. She holds the leashes like flounces of a ball gown. Searching for Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson closed doors, slammed them, turned the lock. She kept inside as she opened words like doors, sliced them open like tin cans, splashing out pain of a meadow aching with dandelions. Words in slanted scrawl like skeins of wool hidden in shut desk drawers, scratched out on scraps on gilded stationery. Emily Dickinson died after crafting an eternity of deaths, syllables whirling in eddies like needles poking through her unlived centuries. I search for that phrase pulled back through the eye to a green grassy space a candle in a midnight room. Photograph on a foggy winter afternoon. How the sun comes in from the left in shafts. How it sits on the leaves that have wintered on that tree. How it lights up the mist to white but doesn't reach the dark forest floor. How we know this is an interlude between ice and ice that the ghost will return, sharpening and sharpening into focus on the summer hillside. This is a poem I wrote during a trip to Spain a few years ago. Hopefully we can all travel again soon. Seville Sunday. The call of the dove fills space between church bell chime and trellis climbing up the walls of our tiny patio. Only a square of sky blue sends down the hottest air. In triple coup, the bird asks, where have you gone? Where are you going? Where are you? In more frantic tremolo, its call echoes down the years, the centuries, through the gardens of the Alcazar and the warm fountains, making a beeline to the Azores and across the ocean in mist, time traveler. It resounds in my grandmother's dining room. Listen, she said to me, it's the morning dove. It was the owl hooting in the woods to the little girl lost and far from home, or that Eurasian dove call moving across the snowtops east of the Alhambra to fall on the cupped ears, thirsty and far below. These two poems are ones that I've had published. On viewing child Hassam, we all looked at the beautiful pictures painted in a time before we were born, in a century before the last one, before the horrors of just yesterday and the day before. And we drank in the colors of the roses whose petals had fallen on the table. A woman looked into a mirror beside an open window. The sunlight poured into the room filled with daffodils. It was morning and a young woman was reading on a settee. She was wearing a dress and stockings. Why not? 
It was a beautiful world, this world of the painting. It was the world that preceded our childhoods or the childhoods we never had. In the painting where the sun didn't shine, there was the shimmering of wet city pavement. Mothers took children by the hand and led them to a warm and comfortable place. The city had a clear view of blue sky down to the harbor. In the world of the heart, when a grassy lawn leads up to a clappered house, it means the ocean is a stone's throw away. Lunch is almost ready and the aroma of lilies and lilacs overwhelms the senses. We don't need to strain the ear to make out the music. A woman in lace plays the piano while her sister sits nearby. Softly close the door so as not to disturb the slow cadence of the passing years. Door. Door, I'd come in and out and in and out with lilacs in my hands, angry over her, over him, over her and over him. Door, I came through after ice and snow. Door, she bolted to keep us out. Door, I ran out of to do what I loved. Door, my daughter slammed. Door, the ghost came through with housewarming embrace. Door closed after I had left sound of shutting, of breaking heart apart. Thank you so much, Susan, and thank you for staying with us for this episode of Local Matters. From all of us at PAC TV, have a happy and safe week. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. We are grateful for your attention. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to the local scene here and share everywhere. Thank you, friends.